Hello everyone, Atheotos here. And today is all about this little CPU. This is quite an obscure one. It is a 386SX clone by VM Technology, the VM386SX+. Plus. Now this chip is marked with minus T40. This could mean 40 MHz. And here I am testing this CPU on my sir 386 ss Now this motherboard is for sure not the best performer. But because of these modifications here, it is just easier for me to swap different CPUs and do all these tests. So this CPU is actually quite rare. Some seller on eBay was selling a few of these the last months, and I had already noticed and got two of these. But then a few months later someone donated two more and told me you have to be the first one to make this video. So yeah, here I am today. It's hard to refuse such a request, right? So first of all, what exactly is this CPU? What is VM technology? And there is this nice report from back in the day. It is a PDF, I will put the link below. This is from 1993. And first of all, it talks about the new CPUs from Texas Instruments, the SXL2 and SXLC2. Yeah, very nice article here with benchmarks and stuff. A die image of the two CPUs. And then if you scroll down here, there is also an announcement from VMT. So first of all, VM Technologies is a Japanese company that was founded by Masatoshi Shima. Shima was the chief designer of Intel's 8080 and Xilox Z80, so a quite important figure. The VM386 Plus, it is an instruction set compatible with the 386 CPU, but it had a more aggressive microarchitecture that basically promises better performance. They promise here a 5 to 15% better performance than the standard 386SX. And okay, they even say that in dry stone you can even reach uh, 35 to 40% faster. The chip was offered in the standard package as the Intel processors, the PQFP 100, but they also offered the smaller package option. In the end, this chip was not targeted for PCs, it came very late into the game. And the target really was embedded and low power applications. Yeah, here they advertise how low is the current on at 16 megahertz 3.3 volt. Having said that, I don't think this is a 3.3 volt chip. I checked the pins and it looks like a standard 386, so no dual supplies. And when I ran it at 5 volts, it didn't really overheat. So now Wikipedia also mentions this CPU. So it looks like that this chip was only sold in Asia and they avoided the US market on purpose. Yeah, not that surprising actually. So all this explains why this is such an obscure CPU. So Wikipedia also mentions here that the Li M6117 SoC contains an x86 core that is basically a variant of this VM386SX+. Now there are no sources about this. And okay, derivative of the VM386X, I don't know what it means. It, it can be exactly the same, it can be some significant variation, I don't know. So what is the M6117? Yeah, this is a very famous uh, SOC that basically integrates a 386SX and everything. It was ALI, then it changed to DMNP, then maybe also NVIDIA got involved. And there are so many little boards here, ESA boards or uh, PC104. I have a few of these boards, so in the future maybe I can make a comparison between this SoC and the 386 motherboard with the LI chipset plus this 386 CPU. A final remark here, okay, there is a dataset of this SoC. And it is clearly stated that it's an LI M1217 chipset combined with a 386SX core. But there's no mention in the whole document about uh, VM technologies, so yeah, I don't know, we will see. So now before we go and compare these two, the standard Intel 386 and this VM386+, Plus, I need first to address three topics regarding this motherboard again. And first of all, regarding this other one that I have, that has the same layout and everything, but uh, here the Sark chipset looks like a new revision, the A5. So last time I mentioned that this one was not working with my custom sims and I tried a lot and it was not working. It was actually behaving quite strangely because with other sims it was totally fine. Yeah, and in the end I checked it a bit more and the problem was just with the sim slots. Now just cleaning them, brushing them had no effect. 
So in the end what I did here and fixed all the problems was just pushing down all the pins one by one in the sim slots. This is quite a barbaric method, but yeah in the end it worked so all okay. I wasn't that worried because even if I broke something here I have replacement sockets, so yeah no issue. Now the way I noticed that the sockets were the problem, it was simply because when I had here my memories, okay it didn't work on the beginning but if I push them like that and type wire on they were working. So that's with the memories, now there are some interesting findings regarding this A5 stepping. In general it performs a little bit better. Ok the difference is very small. Now regarding maximum clocks I didn't notice a big difference. Maybe it is a little bit better but because I have not put my any clock device here yet, yeah I cannot tell for sure. So either way the differences are quite small. So today I'm gonna stay with the classic motherboard that we used in all our previous videos. The SER 386SS with the A4 revision. The second point is regarding my modded BIOS. I improved it again a little bit. And now it also fixes the problem where with the AMD 386SX we could not uh, post at uh, 50 MHz. So let's see here. I put 50 and I have the default BIOS. And yeah, nothing. But then I will change the BIOS with the modded one. And yeah, now it posts just fine. So this modded BIOS fixes 2-3 problems with 2-3 different CPUs. And now this uh, AMD 386SX behaves exactly as the Intel one. I updated my BIOS file in the share. And I will put again this share link in this video description. So if you have any motherboard with a Sark RC 2016 chipset, I really recommend to give a try to my modded BIOS. Then a third point regarding this motherboard. Well yeah, during my test I noticed some problems with floppy drives, but only with specific CPUs and specific speeds. The Intel and the AMD CPU were always ok, but the Cyrix Core CPUs when I was 40 MHz and higher, the floppy disk just didn't work. I disabled the CASES had no effect, so this is not a casing problem. So yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but lower frequencies with the Cyrix CPUs ok, higher frequencies no. So now of course I didn't have the real floppy disk drive, I had this uh, Gordek emulation. So yeah, I don't really have a solution to this problem, but uh, yeah, I just thought it's a good idea to mention it. So let's now go directly and see the comparison between the Intel 386SX and this VM386SX+. Unfortunately I wasn't able to do 40 MHz. So here first of all, okay, I put both CPUs at 33.3 to eliminate any problems and have a fair comparison. And I have here all benchmarks. Okay, I didn't include the hard disk benchmarks because of course it was exactly the same. So here first of all, check it into the test and the VM CPU is 8.7 times faster. Check it floating point 7.7. .7. Check it BIOS video and direct video 7% faster. Now the interesting thing is that in theory check it integer is dry stones and there they promised over 35% performance improvement but yeah okay here it's 8.7 Then okay I have VGA speed it goes a bit lower but I think VGA speed tests are a bit irrelevant I mean the VIT speed uh, gives exactly the same the landmark video gives the same a small variation and the speed sys VESA memory again nearly the same. So in general this VG speed tests I excluded from the average. And then we go to landmark CPU 11.1% faster. And then we have cast check the memory speed this uh, whopping 28.6% faster. Yeah looks like this CPU is way faster with the memory system. This could be significant because okay we are here with a 16-bit bus. Then system information 7.1% faster. Speeds is memory bandwidth 8.8. .8. Speeds is CPU score 2.2. The improvement here is a bit lower than the other benchmarks. And then speeds is memory throughput though 18.7%. Finally okay the real benchmarks 3D bench. 
6.1% improvement. PC player benchmark, okay, zero improvement, but here the score is so low that it's hard to compare, so I don't think this measurement is valid. And then Doom low, there is a 3.5% improvement. So the final conclusion here, I have an average of all the CPU performance benchmarks. I include all the green ones and okay, the yellow also, but divided by two. So the maximum contribution here is only two points for check it, it's 10 to 4. So on average this VM386SX Plus CPU is 6.5% faster. Yeah, I mean this is within the range of the promised 5 to 15%, but of course for sure they over promised a bit. The average of the memory speed, yeah, there is an 18.7% improvement. But if this does not translate to a real performance, yeah, maybe it doesn't matter that much. In the end, okay, the performance increase is not spectacular, but having more 386SX cores is quite exciting, right? Now these are all the good news. Unfortunately, as I mentioned already, I was not able to run it at 40 MHz. And the best I managed to do was 37.5 MHz. And this was only possible at 5.1 volts uh, with uh, Peltier cooling. If I didn't cool enough, basically it was touching on the memory testing. So now let's have a look at some test bands and system information tools at uh, 37.5 MHz. And the first thing that happened when I booted here, yeah, it stuck. Now the thing that stacks here, it's actually the Cyrix tool. Yeah, you see I have the Cyrix tool always loading on the AutoExec but and normally if it detects an Intel or an AMD CPU, it skips the run. But with this CPU, because it cannot detect it correctly, it tries to set some values and then the PC freezes. So this is just a proof again that this is not an Intel clone. And first of all, check it. It just reports this as 8386. And the frequency detection is wrong. And uh, yeah, this is the CPU score. And this is the video score. This is VGA speed, 27.88. So this is landmark. This detects the CPU more or less correctly as a 386SX, 37.6 MHz. Yeah, I mean, Speed sees, uh, sees that as 386DX, 40 MHz. But yeah, okay, Speed sees has some problems detecting 386SX CPUs. The score is 6.77. Then system information. And here we have 386SX 41 MHz. Yeah, this fails also to detect the correct CPU speed. The score is 32.2. Let's see, check CPU. Yeah, classic 386, but 41.4. This is wrong. Then cast check tool. 386 and uh, yeah, completely wrong. So as we can see, most programs fail to detect the correct CPU speed. This is a bit expected. So yeah, this is the result here. And now 3D bends. 11.6 PC player benchmark 2.4 and now Doom minimum details and this is 4155 or 17.98 frames per second then okay finally Doom max details okay this thing that basically is 4.01 frames per second so finally, okay, a first comparison between this VM386 SX Plus at uh, 37.5 MHz to the Intel 386SX at 40 MHz. And yeah, first of all, the Intel CPU is clocked 6.7% higher. And then, okay, as we can see here, overall the VM CPU is a little bit slower. 3D Bench is the same, PC Player Benchmark a little bit slower, Doom in general it's slower, VGA speed slower, Sys Info a little bit higher. Speeds is lower, and then check it is the biggest win for the VM CPU. Yeah, again, this is just a dry stones. So this again verifies that the difference between these two CPUs is around 6.5%. So that was all with the VM386SX Plus CPU. In general, a nice piece of 386SX history, and probably good for any collection. And yeah, when it is clocked the same, it uh, overperforms the Intel 386SX by over 6%. However, because it didn't clock that well, I think in the end it doesn't make much sense to buy one. Now, okay, I'm not 100% sure here because the Cyrix Core CPUs also didn't clock that well on this motherboard. 
And of course I have future plans to try more motherboards with different chipsets also. And okay, if you don't want to miss all that, uh, just subscribe. So that was for today. I hope you liked it. And yeah, see you again next time.